If you've ever tried to build a website on your own, you know how challenging it can be. Each year, the process gets more and more complex, and finding someone to make your site for you can be daunting. Bradley Gauthier is making website creation as simple as filling out a form with his company, Sitecast. My name is Bradley Gothier, and the company that I created is called Sitecast, and we are reinventing the way that you build on the web. With, with Sitecast, you can do anything from host a podcast to capture emails to uh, you know, promote your event or a product or sell a service, and it makes it all very seamless. It looks natural when you um, just put in some uh, simple photos and a text and it, it, it builds itself for you um, so you don't need a lot of technical expertise nor do you need a, a design degree to, to make it look good so it's uh, it gives a lot of power to entrepreneurs to design what's actually in their head versus having someone else uh, try to interpret what they're what they're thinking for how their web presence should look The idea of Sitecast actually uh, has been an evolution that I've, I've noticed over the, the past few years. So about five years ago, I had a marketing firm, uh, you know, employees, the whole lot, uh, the BlackBerry, and I ended up realizing that having a bunch of clients is just another word for having a bunch of bosses. So uh, I've never been one that likes to take orders from anyone. So instead of having just one boss at a, at a typical job, I ended up having dozens of bosses, all had my phone number, all had my email. So I got to a point where I had to change what I was doing with my life. And so I ended up giving everything that I owned away. I had a four bedroom house, fully furnished, uh, ping pong table in the living room, all that kind of stuff. All of that went and I ended up uh, traveling around the nation, couch surfing, um, once Airbnb came about, I loved it because I could actually then just rent someone's place. Uh, but during that time, I started running into a lot of entrepreneurs um, because I was building uh, education software at the time. And they would, these entrepreneurs would hear that I was a web developer and they would continually come up to me and ask, uh, you know, can you help me with, with my web presence? And I would say, no, 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 that's, I'm doing this whole education thing. And what ended up uh, occurring to me is I saw the pattern that I was just leaving money on the table, that the, um, there was a serious need for uh, more professional web um, uh, help. And at the same time, that uh, there's a lot of people that needed a, a solid web presence and didn't have anywhere to, to turn. I actually got started in a business uh, about 17 years ago. Uh, I was 12 years old and I was in the, the computer lab in grade school and my computer teacher uh, told me that someone needed a website. I didn't really know how to do any websites. I was back in the days of GeoCities and you know you could kind of just throw up some, some stuff on the web. So uh, this company was a, a camping supply store and they actually needed a, a website to sell their, their um, gear. And what I ended up doing was my dad bought me an HTML4 book. It was about 600 pages long. I combed through that voraciously. And what I ended up doing was building their website. And in turn, I got a, a nice check. And being a 12-year-old, having a, a nice sum of money to go out and, and buy some fun stuff, like I bought a stereo and I, I actually opened up an E-Trade account and I put some of that money into stocks and it was, it was just very eye-opening that I could take just some knowledge that I had in my head and actually equate that to something that then lived out in the, you know, the internet and at the same time get paid for it. So it was a, a very eye-opening experience and ever since I've been, I've been building websites for uh, businesses and, and myself and and just doing all sorts of uh, 
entrepreneurial ventures since then. I'm an entrepreneur because uh, my dad and a, a lot of my family have just been entrepreneurs their entire life and I grew up with that mindset. So my dad actually owned a, a small business where I grew up and I remember being a, a young kid and being able to go out fishing with him on like a Tuesday afternoon and being able to just go fishing with him where most dads were out, you know, sitting in a cubicle somewhere. I was able to actually go and, you know, experience these, these times with my, my parents that uh, it, it, really, um, it, it really stuck with me. And because of that experience and of how much I enjoyed working with my dad, that uh, I wanted to provide that for my own kids. I don't have any kids yet. But when I do, I know that I'll be able to dedicate the amount of time and uh, be able to actually raise them instead of letting someone else raise them. So uh, I really want to be, um, I want to follow in my dad's footsteps. So it's, uh, I, at that point, I can just be, you know, Mr. Dad instead of, um, uh, you know, just someone that comes home at five and leaves in the morning, you know, I, I want to be like my dad and how he raised me, so. My background outside of business is actually in psychology, and I went to school for psychology, and uh, I've just been a voracious reader of anything that I can get my hands on in psychology. I watch psychology books. Uh, but there's, there's a fascinating concept around evolutionary psychology where um, the, uh, our ancestors 10,000 years ago, you know, there's, there's some that had uh, a sense that they didn't need to, or they shouldn't have gone and petted that lion. And the other ones that did go and pet the lion ended up getting eaten. And the ones that didn't pet the lion ended up you know, carrying on their genes, and here we are 10,000 years later, and we still have that concept of fear of, you know, we shouldn't pet that lion. But the thing with fear to understand is there's no more lions. You know, our fear is, uh, our lions are the, the cubicles, the, um, the fear of the unknown. So we have this, uh, this predisposed uh, fear in us to stay in a comfortable zone and not to go out and, um, you know, uh, approach the uncertainty of what entrepreneurship is. And understanding that fear is just an emotion is just one of the things in our brain that, uh, that we don't need to abide by it was a big aha moment for me in my entrepreneurial path because it allowed me to take a step back and realize that fear only holds us back and that by pursuing the, the unknown, by going after what we actually are passionate about, what we want to uh, truly pursue with our lives, um, there is going to be some fear, but that we can overcome it. The way that I've overcome fear is I think about it, uh, last summer I went skydiving. And it's, it's interesting because with skydiving, you know, once you're on the plane, you're most likely gonna, gonna jump off. So uh, there's an aspect with our brain that uh, our brain only uses about 22 watts of power. And that's fascinating because if you think about it, the lights illuminating this room right now use more power than the most sophisticated uh, thing that we know of. So understanding that there's a finite amount of power that we can apply to any uh, given thought process, and you know those 22 watts, we allocate some of those to just you know our heart beating, digestion, moving our arms. So we're only really left with maybe 10, 15 watts to allocate to something. And if we're a lot of people, if we're allocating those watts to worrying about something, about fear, about if we're worrying about. Uh, certain things that actually don't improve our lives. We're just wasting that power that we could be applying to actually improve our life. 
And through the entrepreneurial journey that I've, I've gone through, I've realized that we, we have a finite amount of brain power and that we should apply it in a way that actually enhances our life and our, our body of work. It's interesting because as I traveled around, I've, I've met a lot of people. And I, having grown up on a, a small Indian reservation in the North Woods of Wisconsin, uh, you don't get much exposure to the, the outside world, you know? And so growing up, you kind of uh, get used to being in a bubble, you know? And once you start traveling around, you're forced to go outside of that bubble and actually see other people's perspectives about how they view the world, what they think about certain topics. And as I've traveled, I've learned that every single entrepreneur and even average people can all um, teach you something about uh, whatever they're passionate about. So for instance, I was in Denver and I was staying with one of my buddies and his roommate, um, they, they uh, love to watch YouTube videos. And prior to that, I'd never, I just thought YouTube videos were, you know, like, oh, look at the cute cat or, you know, like there's just a, I had a, a predisposition to what YouTube was. But then I, I spent a couple months with, with these guys and they, they didn't have cable. They just watched YouTube videos. And I learned that there is all of these educational videos on YouTube. And um, had I gone into that situation, like, oh, I'm just not going to learn anything from these guys. You know, they're just average Joes. I, uh, um, and not so much average Joes, but the, they, they didn't have businesses. Like, they, they had jobs. And so if, if I had taken that route, that I'm not going to learn anything entrepreneurially from them, that uh, um, I would have been pigeonholing myself into that, uh, that just assumption that you can't learn anything. So by hanging out with them and actually understanding that they can teach me something, it, it, really, um, it really opened my eyes to the fact that everyone has their own story and everyone uh, can, can teach you something uh, about, about life. The concept that has uh, influenced the growth of my business the most is just understanding that uh, we all have a lot of ideas. And the thing is, is that those ideas are worthless until you can actually implement those ideas. So it's, it was a huge shift in, um, uh, I've always been an idea guy uh, where, you know, I can, I can look at anything and come up with different ideas of how to improve it, or I can come up with ways to monetize it, or I can, you know, like, it's, it's not hard to come up with ideas if, you're, if you have that entrepreneurial mindset. The hard thing that, uh, that I've realized is the implementation of those ideas is what actually separates the, the entrepreneurs that um, never really get anywhere versus the one that, um, that go far with their career. So like for instance, the, um, we all know someone that we met maybe five years ago. They had this great idea and we meet them today and they're just on to the next big idea. They're, they just, they, they love ideas. They're always pursuing this next idea, but they're not actually implementing those ideas. And um, we, we, we see that a lot and I see that a lot uh, traveling around. And so it's, it's very important to not just have ideas, but actual ways to implement those ideas. We have to remember that the voice in our head is just a voice in our head. It's not our full brain. It's just someone that's talking to us. So if, if we think about it in a way that if we can just take those, those voices in our head and use them as suggestions, not as uh, gospel, it, it, it frees us to take a step back and actually look at this, uh, this emotional roller coaster that entrepreneurship is, is uh, purely that, emotions. Like if we can separate the emotion from the decision making and what actually is going to help us pursue 
the, the life that we want, it really helps to um, fully just uh, take in the, the journey and, and, you know, there's always going to be down moments, there's always going to be highs, you know, uh, lows could be five minutes after a high, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy. You literally have to be crazy to be an entrepreneur, but if you can transcend those emotions, uh, I found that it, it really um, allows you to do amazing work. The advice that I'd give a budding entrepreneur is to understand that uh, money doesn't buy happiness, but it's the other way around. So five years ago when I had my marketing firm, I was, I was doing decent in terms of uh, my revenue and you know, the quality of life that I had. You know, I had a house, I had you know, a car, I could go out on a, a weekend and not worry about bills, but it wasn't bringing me happiness. And so what I, what I ended up realizing as I, um, as I left that life behind is that in order to be truly successful, you need to be happy first. Because uh, I've met a lot of rich people that are miserable. But I've met a lot of happy people that are dirt poor. So there's something there, right? So the, the thing that I've, I've ultimately come to, to realize is that you can never truly be successful until you're truly happy. So in the past few years, as I've traveled around, as I've built my businesses, as I've helped other entrepreneurs, the thing is, is until you truly understand what is, uh, what brings you happiness, you can never find uh, any true route to success with your business. And un until that becomes a uh, ingrained concept in our mind, we're just going to be spinning our wheels and we're going to find ourselves 10 years from now unhappy, uh, maybe a little bit wealthy, but uh, it's, the wealth does not buy happiness. It's, it's, happiness does not cost anything.